Um, thanks to Martin Gardner, I am a skeptic. And um, skepticism was a big part of Martin Gardner's life and the subject of several of his books. But we don't hear a whole lot about it at this conference. But I'd like to give you uh, a recent round in the battle between science and uh, pseudoscience. If you go uh, to Death Valley National Park, you find these rocks, which are just ordinary rocks. But they have these trails that are very strange and hard to explain. Apparently, this rock you can see in the picture has moved, and the trail is much longer than you can see. Uh, it has apparently slid along the ground a long ways. And this is quite a large rock. As you can see, I think it would be difficult for one person to lift it. And if you take an overhead view of this area, it becomes even more mysterious. You see that there are lots of rocks that have tracks. And even more bizarre, a lot of them seem to like to turn to the right suddenly. And it's, it's, science has struggled to find a natural explanation, explanation of this. Um, and whenever there's anything strange in the desert, uh, that nobody can explain, uh, it's always blamed on aliens. Aliens are moving these rocks in the middle of the night. And uh, I think as skeptics, we would rather have no explanation rather than the wrong explanation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what is really going on here? Now, uh, here's a brief history. They were discovered in the 1940s. They're very old. And another important fact is they're in a very remote part of Death Valley, and you can't get to them with a rental car. This keeps 99% of the visitors away from them. But uh, despite the fact that there is such a remote area, in 2012, a bunch of scientists set up an extensive monitoring system. Um, and one of the things, they had still cameras on a platform or taking pictures every 30 seconds. And they had movie cameras, video that was, could be triggered remotely. They also had a weather station recording the weather every 30 seconds. Another thing they did. They took GPS receivers, and they stuck them in the rocks. <laughs> and I think as a scientist, it takes a tremendous amount of guts to do this, because it seems to me the most likely outcome is that this rock will sit for 10 years in the desert and not budge a centimeter. And not only will your peers be laughing at you for putting a GPS receiver in a rock, but you will have just wasted 10 years worth of GPS batteries. <laughs> But actually, they were able to overcome a large number of problems. One of the things they did was they stuck a magnet under each rock when they set it in place. And they had a special switch that would only turn the GPS receiver on when the rock moved off the magnet. So they didn't burn 10 years worth of GPS batteries, for one thing. And uh, it was set up in 2012. And for a year, nothing happened at all. Then suddenly, in December 2013, their pagers went off. They had pagers set up in case they started moving. It was right before Christmas in 2013, I should point out, <laughs> that movement was detected. So they immediately dropped everything. They were lived in San Diego and drove all the way to Death Valley to find out that the, they had captured the aliens in, in, uh, in, on, on film. But no, what they did was they discovered how the rocks were moving. And uh, they, had, they documented 60 rocks. There's a scientific paper now written on this that up to 17 kilograms, moving up to 220 meters. So how do the rocks move? Well, here is what they discovered. Here is how you move rocks up to 17 kilograms. And there are much larger rocks there, too, actually, up to 100 kilograms. How do you move them in a natural way with no alien or human involvement? So here is a rock sitting there. And this is what the experiment revealed. The first ingredient you need is some water. And uh, of course, this seems rather unlikely in Death Valley, but it does rain there. And this is also a dry lake bed. This is where the water goes. But you need a very specific depth, 5 to 10 centimeters, as we'll see. The next thing you need is ice. Cold, very, you need a cold night that freezes a very thin layer, only about the thickness of a window pane. Uh, and uh, also, Death Valley also known for record high temperatures, but certainly does get below freezing in the middle of the winter at night, on a clear night. Now, the final ingredient, which was the one that seemed most obvious, is wind. And what happened in the experiments, and there's a videotape of actually this process, which I don't have time to show. Um, but you can find it if you Google this subject. But the wind's only 4 to 5 meters per second. Uh, the sun rose during the day. 
the ice sheets broke up into very large panes, perhaps 20, 30 meters on a side, very large panes. Um, and the rocks, of course, were embedded in there and slid along and uh, slid along the lake bed, leaving those tracks. So here is, from the paper that was produced, here is a picture of fresh rock tracks where the ice is all melted, but the water is still there. And these were just a couple hours old. And you can see the same uh, strange coordinated movement, which is, of course, because when the wind shifts, all these rocks are embedded in a piece of ice. And so they all move the same way. So the final question I have for you is, is the mystery solved? Um, <laughs> and I think for all of us in this room, it's definitely, it seems th this experiment was a home run for science. I mean, it, it, I can't imagine it turning out any better, in fact. But I'm interested in the question of what does the general public feel about this? And my technique for finding this out is that I Google, I've been Googling this topic every six months since 2014 when the paper came out. And I've been looking to see what the general consensus is on this. And I'll be, I'm happy to report that there's no more aliens ever <laughs> involved in the explanation for this. And it seems like th this has really been solved, uh, even to the, to the general public. And um, I don't want to give you the impression that pseudoscience is on the way out. As Robert Kreese's talk this morning, uh, the, there's even the, the, the incidence of pseudoscience is actually increasing in a lot of different areas. And I'll leave you with one final thought. I, I, uh, why is this uh, experiment, or why has this uh, explanation been so successful in this case? And is there anything we can use here that we can use in climate science denial to uh, argue with those people, and also uh, intelligent design, all these other pseudosciences that are cropping up and are very difficult to uh, eradicate? Thank you.